actions, uh, you know, obviously the meeting's not called to order with one person, okay. one, one line commissioner here. Uh, so so uh, I'm Kirby Keaton, I'm the chair. Um, I'm an attorney, I work for the state of Vermont uh, for doing tax policy work. Um, let's go around. <laughs> I'm Mike Miller. Uh, you guys know me. Um, and I'm the planning director for the city of Montpelier. I've been here for eight years now. Hi, I'm Jake. I'm a senior at UVM interning with city of Montpelier, currently working on the public safety plan. Nice to meet you, Jake, by the way. Oh, Jake, I thought you're not a planning commission member. No, no. Oh, so we only have no. one. <laughs> it really is just me. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Aiden Eikhoff from SE Group. I used to be in Burlington and now I'm in Colorado, um, but familiar with this area. And within the community planning team, I'm often working on economic development, communication, um, a lot of our graphics and public engagement. So excited to be here. And I'm Gabby Voller. I'm a senior uh, planner with SE Group. Um, I'll be managing the project that Aiden will be doing, the day-to-day -day work. And to give you a little bit of background, our company has offices in Burlington, Vermont, Frisco, Colorado, and Salt Lake City, Utah. And um, we recently, our most recent project with Montpelier was we did the downtown master plan. What was that 2019 2018 maybe yeah it would have been just before covid yeah and aiden you worked on that didn't you yep yep with patrick mostly um and so i do a lot of the i run a lot of the community master plans and kind of downtown projects and we've done a lot of work on story maps kind of bringing projects to life on the on the web through maps and narrative um so I'm sure Mike's given you a little bit of background, but we applied for this project and we're excited to help you bring your comp plan to life and make it easy to read for your residents and users and all that good stuff. Have you guys been able to get in touch? I know um, uh, you guys were gonna have some folks get in touch with Zach about getting access to our um, stuff our arc map stuff did you were you guys able to make those connections yeah i did email zach and it seems like we can create everything on our account and then just transfer it over um zach did not foresee any any issues with that process as far as getting um gis data from it's at the rpc right at that yeah. that connection has not been made yet okay Yeah, well, um, I think we can, we could probably just get going. I don't know, Mike, do you, I mean, I, I'm still interested, of course, in hearing if we don't end up having everyone else um, show tonight. Uh, hard to know what was going on with our other two members, maybe since it was just a presentation tonight, maybe that was, I don't know, people saw that as a, as a reason to take a night off, I'm not sure. Uh, but I mean, you're recording uh, it, so you know we could kind true. of continue, and they can get up to speed and watch it. Before. And the we're not making any decisions. We're really trying to give you an yeah. intro to the project and kind of some of the options and all of that. Exactly, exactly. So it's good background info, and you're totally right about it. You know, Orca's recording it, so it will, you know, the public will be able to see it. Um, so yeah, let's let's jump into it. Uh, so this is not uh, an official meeting. This is, uh, so there's no reason for me to, to call that to order. Uh, this would be just a, a working meeting and presentation for the Planning Commission. Um, so there's no need to follow uh, the agenda necessarily. So let's just jump right to the <laughs> plan meeting with SC Group. Run it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it. Um, so the first thing that was on our previous agenda, um, was to look at, um, sort of schedule, um, make sure that that still aligns with both sort of internal and external 
forces there. So if I have the power, it looks like I don't have the power right now to share my don't screen. Have the power, okay. Let's... You don't? I have the power. Why do you not have uh... the power? <laughs> Uh, okay, now I do. Maybe okay. I wasn't seeing it, but I was looking in the right spot. Okay. Um, so this is the timeline, uh, slightly updated since the proposal. Um, we are in this first phase, supply, defining the plan template. So that is our group is going through the existing chapters, um, creating data requests, kind of trimming down on some text, um, doing an outline of each chapter. Um, so once those outlines and data requests are completed, um, we typically send those to Mike who distributes them to the applicable parties for each uh, data request and chapter. Um, so far, you know, we're here, we're at this, planning commission meeting, I think we feel pretty good about finishing out the um, outlines and data requests for the existing chapters by November, knowing that we're going to be catching up on some of the non-existing chapters um, a little bit later. Mike, does that jive with what you were thinking there? Still like maybe January, February for some of the other content to come in? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So I think the one chapter that the planning commission will have to work on will be the land use one. And I think that was we were going to do a little bit of maybe iterative work with you guys yeah. to kind of see what would be possible because we talked about a few ideas. But I think the other chapters um, are the community services, um, utilities and facilities we're working on, community services, and Jake is working on public safety. So Hopefully okay. we'll be able to wrap those up. Uh, our goal is to have all of those, except maybe land use would, would be all done by uh, the December. Okay, perfect. Um, so at this point, we have um, chipped away at the economic development, energy plan and housing, but the chapter that is furthest along is the historic resources. Um, so my coworker, Julia, um, who uh, is on the, Burlington Planning Commission this evening. Once the schedule gets normalized, she'll be able to join these meetings. Um, uh, she created the outline, uh, did the data request and got material back and has created a like example chapter that we can look at. Um, as far as the other phases go, just to introduce people to this, um, after, November, December, when a lot of this is in a draft phase, um, we'll come back to the planning commission and really look at, does this structure make sense? Is it communicating the things that we wanna communicate? Um, at that point, uh, we'll strategize on how we would like public engagement to be involved and at what phase and what that looks like as well. And then this third phase has these review committees which aren't fully uh, formed or thought out, but we're essentially going to try to put the website in front of uh, potential user groups, um, maybe youth, maybe um, visually impaired folks to try to see how the usability of this website um, really reacts to different audiences. So that review committee will likely have uh, at least one planning commission member, but also just be really introducing other folks to this website. Um, so that's the difference between the review committee and the planning commission folks. Um, and then we have this public engagement opportunity. So we're envisioning sort of a plan launch um, to, again, get some feedback on it, but really just let people know that it's out there um, and it exists. Um, any questions on schedule or any notes, considerations? I have a question for Mike, actually, just um, are we are we still or, or at what point, Mike, are we thinking of uh, starting to introduce this to the city council? Um, 
because the city council will probably make changes, at least some some changes. Um, I don't think it, it's not going to be a rewrite or anything, but that mm -hmm. that could affect, you know, the content that you're putting in. So I'm just wondering how those things are going to overlap. Yeah, I think we're going to have. There's going to be a, a plan development. Most of this is kind of going through the kind of the plan development. And then there's going to be the formal public hearings for the adoption that would happen afterwards. And then, you know, we would work with SC group to make those edits as they come through. We're expecting most of those edits would be smaller. Um, and we can either that's within the contract or we pay them separately outside to make the, the small edits. Cause that those, those could take, you know, they, we could get in and out of this in three or four months, or we could take a year for them to slowly meticulously pick through everything. So we just have to kind of go, but most of this is kind of more plan development before we go into the public hearing process. Now we're going to want, as we come up with things and we start getting into these public process that, you know, a little bit of that in that step three, they're going to help us, SC Group is going to help us set up a number of ways to communicate with the public, but their contract is not to be doing the public input as much as, um, you know, they'll be doing the beta testing and these things to make sure it works and functions with different groups, but most of the public outreach is going to be things that you and uh, Planning Commission and I are going to do, taking this on the road to, um, you know, whether it's going to the farmer's market or, uh, you know, doing things at the senior center or setting up other meetings or going back to different commissions or, or doing, you know, the capillary neighborhoods, whatever we think um, is, is appropriate to get out as much input as we can. Hopefully being an online format, people will have the opportunity to review. And our hope is that within the um, the document itself will be opportunities to provide comments. So our hope is we've just got to get people to start viewing it. And that's, this is the plan. So if somebody goes in and reviews the historic resources plan, after they review the plan, they can make comments or questions. Um, but we've got to have some public input meetings that we would probably be handling a majority of those. And maybe that's within our public, um, some of our planning commission meetings, maybe we, you know, do a lot of advertising, a lot of blasting about, you know, we're going to discuss two or three chapters at this meeting. Um, and then, you know, I, I don't want to try to go through one, you know, take us five months to go through one chapter a meeting. Um, we certainly could, it's up to you, uh, the planning commission and how you want to do it. But I would like to see us try to get through a couple of these, a meeting because they're already there. They're already online. People already have them. Um, and hopefully we can do a quick introduction and then take input and then move on to the next chapters at the next meeting. Okay, so uh, I have a follow-up question now. <laughs> um, so are you potentially using, so what I originally thought was like this, the online version is gonna go live at the same time that you're completing kind of your draft of all your content. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing now that's kind of helpful is that you're gonna have, an online, we're basically creating an online draft that you want to use in as a public outreach tool while you go through some additional input and adoption process. So we're not put, we're not producing just the final plan on the web. We're actually producing a draft plan using some of those public input tools for input. And then like you said, whether it's we have money left or whether we do additional around for some editing to get it to the final version. Is that kind of what you're, so I was thinking we had the final plan is all there. Oh. And then we have some kind of continuous input process. But I think this is actually better is the draft plan gets published. We have caveats and say, this is a draft. We're still getting some input. It's not an adopted plan yet. And then we use some of those commenting tools, forms, surveys embedded on the story map site to get it to go from draft to final. Yeah, that would that would okay. be my my hope. Okay. And That's helpful. That's helpful. So as far as this timeline goes, um, would you like it to be more clear 
on this, that there is a draft launch and then in some future time, there is a final. I think it's fine as long as it's understood that this timeline is the drafting process and that the final would come closer to the end. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it does say like draft and final, but these like now through this conversation, like are is that the right, are we gonna be at a full draft by February? Hopefully, maybe not. Like there might be some fuzziness there. Um, yeah, like okay. like Mike was saying, we, we don't know how long the city council will take with it. Mm -hmm. But uh, so my original question for Mike was kind of like, when are we going to at least first send it to city council? Um, so to at least start that. And um, what are you thinking, Mike, this, this summer? Yeah, I mean, summer. I think it's a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of the political question of, of how to manage the process. Um, sometimes the council just wants to get it when they get it. So we get through our process, we hold our public hearings, we send it to them and it becomes their document and they have public hearings and decide, you know, they could have just the required, the two minimum required hearings and take testimony on the whole document, which would be the whole website, or they could break it into pieces. Um, you know, I've had boards and commissions do it differently. Um, I would say Montpelier tends to be a community that that goes for more public input than less. So I don't know if they're going to simply warn, um, you know, warn it over three meetings or four meetings to go and say, well, you know, we're going to look at these three chapters first, and we're going to take these three chapters next, and and work their way through it. Um, I I had twenty two meetings on the zoning. Um, you were you were there for the zoning that was starting in starting I think in, in February and it was adopted in January and that was a couple of meetings a month. So, but they wanted to carefully pick through every single, single zoning chapter from beginning to end. Um, so I don't know how they're gonna handle, handle this process. Um, I'm hoping, you know, my hope is that as we, as these start to roll out that people are generally looking at them positively and, and, and agreeing with the approach that we took and the process that we took and uh, that that this really rolls out. I mean, it would be great if, if we're done, you know, if the content is done by the end of February and, and we've got things pretty close to buttoned up, we could go right into, you know, an extended planning commission public hearing process that is March through June, and it could be basically going to city council in July. I mean, I would love that. Um, I just can't until until the public starts reacting to it. I won't know. Awesome. Okay. So having a little bit more of a vetted, at least slightly vetted work product before city council, and then have it go through that process. That makes sense. Yeah, we try to get the council. We invite the council to go to the planning commission process because we'd mm -hmm. rather have their input. If they're going to have problems with something, we'd love to have them, you know, kind of give their thoughts, even if it's just an individual counselor. It's always good to have the individual counselor say, you know, I'm not going to be able to support the energy plan the way it's laid out at this time. Then we know mm -hmm. we can either send it on to them because they're just one vote, or we can go through and make amendments to make that counselor happy. But it, we really usually don't know until we're in the process where they're going to be. But again, in general, this council has been very good. But we'll also have to see because in March we'll have um, an election where we're going to potentially have three to four new seats. So okay, we'll have to be seeing how the elections turn out, where things land. Mm -hmm. um, okay, doc. I think next on the list was to review progress, which I've given a little bit of an update. Um, the furthest ahead right now is the historic resources chapter. Um, the other ones are still in the like editing and data request phase. Um, I think I have it up on my screen here. You see where it says historic resources. Okay. So um, this is a, 
just an example of what this chapter could look like. Uh, we went pretty light on the branding and colors and that sort of stuff, just knowing that um, there would be, that's often what people really latch on to. So we're going to start with the content and the structure and then kind of do the polish a little bit later. Um, so it starts off here with just a little introduction about, you know, why historic resources are important, a fun little slider tool before and after. We're also using this example chapter to show you some of the features of story maps, like how we want to walk. I don't know how familiar you are, Kirby, with story maps, but you know, making this come alive a little bit more than just reading a plan. So we're we're kind of test we're testing some of the features that we want to use, like the slider bars, like the show you how the the text content and the photo content interacts as you scroll through the page. So please, you know, stop us if you want to talk about any of the features or comment on things you like or or don't like. I, I can say generally we're thrilled to have you doing this kind of work because it's it's not the kind of expertise that that we have. So it's a it's a huge bonus for us. Thank you. I always think the slider is a fun way to like catch people's attention. Yeah, and there are some other examples here that um, Julia emailed to us today that um, for her really show you know how other cities and counties have taken a process like this on. Um, so if we do have time, we can look briefly at those. Um, so here's um, an example of what we would call like a quick map where um, she's going, she's using this tool to kind of go through a couple of the like statistics that were highlighted in this chapter. Um, so the historic district, historic markers, and the landmark. The numbers are a little confusing because they don't quite match up with the stats, but you can kind of see that it um, jumps people around town, has a photo, has a description. Can you zoom in and out on your own to that map or do you, is it, is it tied to just the scrolling, Aiden? Yep, yep, no, you can, you can, um, you can explore. In the okay. background, you can, um, whoever makes the story map can decide what, uh, how zoomed in it goes when people scroll and where it goes to. And how many clickable products like are all, what layers do you have that are clickable? Just those four or do you have like the layer with all the historic structures? Um, so this map, the base map in the background is static. It's, there's no- right, right. Um, Yep, there's no like actual GIS data that's supporting this. Okay. Julia went and clicked on those four locations. Oh, got it. Okay. Um, yep. So, but we can, that's a good point. We there is capacity and capability to have a base map where you can click on the state building, click on the museum or something like that, and and a similar um little info card can pop up. So it just kind of depends on how you're setting up the data in the background, but this one um, was just like a little custom quick. Okay. Put together. Yeah, like we've got we've got the the GIS data layer for the National Register District, which includes the building outlines of the contributing and non-contributing structures within the district. So certainly that would probably be a layer that um, she could integrate, you know, into that first piece when yeah, when that's what I was the historic yeah. district. That here's here's the district. Yeah. Yep, um, exactly. And it would have all of the, all of the, three, you know, which where are the three hundred and five hundred and thirty five contributing structures? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, I think that would be a cool application. I'm gonna write that down. I like this base map look. I feel like I haven't seen. A base yeah, map. it's kind of like one of those like, pre-built like, ones. Um, okay. Yeah, that is neat. That is a. It kind of makes it look um, old but new. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so yeah, that's this first tool. Um, so far it's organized into issues and background. And something that I, when I reviewed, I sort of highlighted is that like, we'll definitely wanna make sure that where we can, um, these sections and flow will, is consistent. So if all the chapters have issues, background goals, great, um, but we'll just wanna make sure that it's um, consistent for each one that pops up here. Yeah, I think the header we used was how this chapter in this case would be how historic resources relate to other chapters of the plan so in some cases they they support and in some cases they create conflict with other chapters so okay okay um again this is a this is like what's called a sidebar with a quick map feature here um so we don't have the overlay district in here yet. We don't have the contributing structures. Um, but again, I think that would be a really cool thing to highlight on this page. Photos in there. Then we get to goals. Um, it's just a little placeholder here of um, a little photo library that could be placed in this section, and then the, how do we get this done? So I'll need to follow up with her on what this is looking at, the historic resources progress, some sort of a little dashboard that shows um, number of outreach efforts completed and stuff here. Um, so I'll need to see like how those can be um, sort of like continually updated. Um, you know, if that's a spreadsheet that the city is updating and then the computer just knows to update it, I'll need to look more into that. Um, but then just a little. Um, yeah, I think this was the piece where we were this is doesn't appear how we measure progress isn't in all the other chapters and this this is where we would need to have a line because it has to be static the plan really can't be dynamic oh right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so some of these pieces may be you know um we would love to be able to integrate them but it's really not the primary primarily what we're trying to do is make sure we get that top part um, and if we've got the time and, and, and you guys find it's relatively easy for us to insert the measurables into there, if we locate how to measure things and we want to put them in, then we would put them in. But we'd have to kind of put a dynamic line there, which would indicate that this is, you know, on the, yeah. there, it's, it's here, but it's not part of the plan here. <laughs> yeah. Got and it. then also right, right, right. for the feedback process, we could under that line say the above was the draft plan. Here's a short survey. What did you like about this chapter? What needs improvement? Whatever, you know, a three question survey about the chapter or however we want to get that feedback. Yep. That's a good point. Highlight what's static and what's dynamic. What's, yeah. Okay. Um, so are there initial thoughts about the level of text, level of graphics, structure? Um, seems like there's some absolutely some data and mapping that needs to be highlighted a bit more, pull in, pull in those data points, um, get the overlay district in there, things like that. This link, I believe, is public. So I think um, your folks will be able to look at it and review if you would like to sort of review it on your own time. Um, it is, the link will update. So if Julia puts maps in here or data gets in there, you'll be able to see that. 
um, through... put the link in the chat, Aiden, so then they can click it. Yeah, perfect. Into their one, own browser. Yeah, one. I'm trying to think if you want to just send it to me. Um, because I don't know how accessible the chat is going to be at the after the. Oh, okay. The meeting Good is point. over, so you send it to me. I okay. can get it out to the. Do we want to pause? And we have two new participants. Um, uh, yeah, the the two new participants are our uh, other planning commissioners who were available for tonight. So oh, great. Yeah, John Adams and Aaron Kaziki are members of the planning commission. Um, we still don't have a quorum technically. Okay. Uh, but uh, but we do have more folks seeing this, which is great. And just so you guys know, my I plan to after this meeting, I'll do a write up kind of summarizing what we went over for the rest of the planning commission, just to catch them up a little bit about at least my impressions of, of things. And um, can we share the link in the chat? I know for our viewers at home, we can share it another way or people can actually probably see it on the screen share there, although typing that in might be might be uh, cumbersome, but thank you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And John, we hear that you have some technical expertise with how to, and I'm trying to get, get if I can get this right, Mike, you might have to correct me of how we would link some of the like action items across different chapters. Is that right? Yeah. How to show the implementation strategies that we, right. The goals, aspiration goals, and those are, it's why it's all in the Excel table because. <laughs> John's the man has the way to present it. I don't know if we can figure out how to make that fit into the story map, but we can, we should be able to iframe it in pretty easily with it or do an embed here. I don't think that would be okay. It would be hard. We yeah. don't have to belabor that. We can cross that bridge, you know, at the right time in the process. I wanted you to know how we were thinking about it. We want to connect. <laughs> we want to connect those dots at some point. Who who would we try to get John to connect up with? The all three of you, or I think probably Aiden because she's kind of running the day to day. Okay. On this make sure, project, I'll make sure you two your emails okay. connect so you guys can figure out a time to go over things. Absolutely. Um, okay, doke. So I have a couple of notes in here to get the GIS data to look at the structure of each chapter, maybe look at the headings of each section here to really make sure that they're making sense. Um, at, I think the, oh, yep, sorry so to sorry. sorry to interrupt. I think the permissions might uh, might not be published um, or shared to the public for the story map. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I don't know if I have the permissions to make it public. <laughs> Ooh, I'm an administrator. Um, okay, there we go. Thank you. So the next planning commission meeting, uh, seeing as we're, we were missing a couple of folks um, and maybe some folks joined late, I'm happy to go over like a slightly updated version of this historic resources and, and wherever else we are um, at that point, if there's other chapters built out. Um, but as John, Kirby, Mike, as um, Aaron, <laughs> Jake, whoever um, has feedback on this, um, that can absolutely be integrated into us drafting further chapters. Uh, yeah, so so about that, Aiden, uh, do you think that, that the, so, so what I'm hearing from you is that uh, you want our feedback about historic resources as a template for future chapters. Uh, is there going to be, do you think, you, do you think that you'll be developing out uh, more of this in the near future? As in, will it make sense for us to wait a little while before we check in about that? Um, 
So as far as um, updating this historic resources, we'll just need to make sure that we have the data from the RPC. So if that is quick and we can um, get that incorporated, I see that being a next two to three week item, probably not a next two to three day item. Um, so as far as comments on structure and the amount of content, I think that that can be any time. Um, but if there's um, specific comments that would come after the data is integrated, then yeah, th those would have to wait a little bit. Yeah, I would say, Kirby, one of the big things we would want to be looking at at this stage is to make sure that a lot of the big headers, so we're talking really the template, and not necessarily the specific content details. So um, as we had in there, we talked about issues and background and, and, you know, should that be issues or should that be how this relates to other chapters? Mm -hmm. um, because we know how we wrote out our chapters. Um, but those are the types of things that are going to be important because we're going to replicate this exact format for each of the other chapters. It's not going to have different format. You know, if we're going to talk about the issues here, then we're going to talk about the issues in the other one. We're going to talk about the backgrounds and energy and we're going to talk about. Um, so we're, we want to make sure we've got the format right. And we're talking about, um, you know, if we need to adjust things, you know, maybe the, maybe the decision is, hey, we got the background. Maybe the background should be above the issues. Right. Um, whatever those are really some of the big things um as as much as the content is obviously important and we're going to be reviewing it from the standpoint of reviewing a template we really want to think about the big picture of yeah i i like these slider bars i like this or i think that's distracting or um those are kind of some of the the, the template things uh yeah can you Nope, you're good. We can hear you. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we can. I mean, we can get some instant feedback about that now. And and Aaron and John jump in, and, and of course Mike. Uh, so yeah, so right now it's broken down as issues, background, and what else? Issues, background, goals. Um, okay. how do we get uh, this done? Okay. Progress. So. I don't think that we're married to it, but but what we've uh, what we've done so far is just like the way the chapters have been have been written, and it's been almost it, it wasn't by design necessarily. It's just kind of how we did it and how we started doing it. Uh, there's an intro in each chapter, mm -hmm. which is which is background, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's uh, and then there's the the next part is how does the the, the the chapter that's being discussed, how does it relate to the other chapters? And that could probably be put in a you know more interesting or easy to follow or easy understandable way. But that is the gist of it. And I think that we, we've considered it an important part um, so that the reader understands how the whole plan is holistic, you know? And we don't currently have that on there, right, Aiden? The how um, it relates to uh, the Julia renamed that the issues. I believe. No, so, yeah, it doesn't make sense. I think I was talking about a section that says how it relates to the other chapters. No, yeah, I know. She just changed the heading here to say the issues. So this one's talking about tourism economy. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the, the content that we had about how it relates to other chapters is currently in the issues on, on this okay. page. Um, but, it, but it's not issues so much. It's more of you know, how is this chapter fit with all the other things we're doing? Yeah. Okay, um, so maybe we change that header. Yep. Yeah. And and we I think I think I can speak for all of us to say that if you if there's an interesting or a catchy way to put that, you know, we're on board. Yeah. Uh because it is a bit of a mouthful as it is. That's so probably anyways, why that's she just... was trying to simplify it and say the yeah. issues, but um and and then this and the last part that's that's our typical way of going about it is a summary of past efforts. That's kind of more background, more what's been done in the past. Um, it's not, in my view, anyway, it's not an essential part of what this plan's about. Mm -hmm. So not a high priority thing to include, I would say. Although um, Mike may disagree, there's probably some statutory requirements for 
listing some past efforts if i if i'm in a fuzzy way remembering that but but just <laughs> just to give my two cents of like of like not a top thing but like but having somewhere on there like a rundown of um of what's been done in the past um has, was important to to when we were putting this together and then after that the uh chapters tend to actually walk through the nuts and bolts of the uh of the plan itself of the chapter itself which as i'm sure you guys all know by now the way that that we've ranked things are aspirations are the biggest 10,000 foot view things mm -hmm. and then the goals underneath the aspirations and then under that is uh is the strategies which is the actual specific action item things um, Aiden, can you scroll to that so we can see how that's organized uh i don't is that do we not put that on there is that part of how do we get this done how we get this done looks like that was what we were calling the summary of past efforts or something like that um which right. as you can see from this is it's, it's kind of just like what's what's going on what's been, been going on recently mm -hmm. so um did we not put the aspirations goals and strategies in here what, what about this section um i think those are the aspirations okay what are we calling this header scroll up a little bit those are we're calling those goals okay so this is an aspiration statement and then these are the goals but the strategy or are these the strategies the strategies are how how we get this how to get this done okay, okay. i don't know so if, what is, what's under there is are the strategies or not or just okay so them. is that larger text the aspiration yes i think it may be the first aspiration there is only one aspiration there's only one yeah. so so other chapters yeah we'll have one to three More. right so that i think that is you know one of the things that i'm definitely going to look for as these other chapters get developed is okay this one only has one and it looks clean you know that's all fine but if there's you know multiple of this big block text like how do we communicate that those are different aspirations that have their own goals and strategies as part of them so this this chapter may not have been um you know it won't be the best example of how that um gets um demonstrated for other chapters for sure but good to highlight the structure there yeah john i was just gonna say it does seem like having an either aspirational statement i don't know if they would be like run-on sentences for those that have multiple ones but it'd be nice if there was just one for every chapter right i think i think uh i don't know i i guess throughout this I'm, i've been sort of biased towards simplifying and throwing throwing things out but um um yeah, to the extent that it's possible to make them look at, like, mm -hmm. if, uh, like I don't know, having a separate thing that says aspiration and goals, and then it seems like unnecessarily complicated to me. And I like the idea of if we if it is just goals and there is either a call out or a blocker of of a more aspirational statement, and maybe they're longer than others, and then having the goals yeah. listed out that seems. Uh, John, what if we, um, for some of the chapters, I, I, as I recall, needed more than one aspiration because the subject matter was such a large area that um, you couldn't have a meaningful aspiration. Um, so I'm just thinking that inevitably we'll have situations where there's more than one aspiration. Uh, what if we just had more than one of these blocks? Like like what, what, what like this, this, the goals block we would mm -hmm. instead Maybe um, this is up for debate, but whether like the title there that, that says the goals, maybe that actually says something specific each time for the type of aspiration it is. Um, so like in this case, maybe it could say historic resources or something like that. Um, and uh, then we have one of these blocks for the aspiration and then below it would be a different block with 
a kind of a, a, a uh, indicator type word as the top, as the heading word there that has the other aspiration and, and then lists the goals underneath that. So so instead of making it look too cramped, we just have different blocks. It means the entire page is kind of longer. The way some of these chapters were written, I think, is how it could work out. I'm, I'm kind of thinking out loud to a certain degree here. Yeah, no, you're okay. I mean, looking at, um, I think, regardless of how we uh, want to either combine aspirations or not combine aspirations, just making sure that we can have a consistent structure throughout the chapters, I think, is the most important. So if we change what this says here, like that's that's fine. We just need to make sure that if it's historic resources for the historic resources chapter, that that is the same for all the others. Um, and then, I mean, this could be like, I don't even know if we want to use the word aspiration, but like 1.1, <laughs> you know, Montpelier will do this, this, and this, and then things are nested underneath it in a way that people can kind of understand what goals go to which aspirations and which strategies go to which goals. Um, yeah, I think yeah, that so, that's fine. So, I, yeah, like, so like, far, there's only, there are two chapters that have more than one aspiration. So there's only housing and economic development. Mm -hmm. And economic development was because there's a split between the aspiration, if you're looking at it from the through the perspective of the business, and then there's economic development through the perspective of the of basically of labor, of mm -hmm. the workforce. So you you have different aspirations, um, same same theme, but you're looking at it through two lenses: one through support of business, and one through support of the workforce. And those are two separate concepts. But mm -hmm. and then. And, and yeah, housing was split into two, but other than that, everybody else did, you know, as John points out, we originally had like four and three and two and four, and they all got compressed down to one with the exception of those two chapters. Mm -hmm. But it'll probably be a lot more complicated when we get to community services. So I'll be curious to see when we try to compress what's nine different sub chapters, how do we make a single aspiration if it's possible. I, I was I was thinking of community services when I was thinking about how inevitable it will be, but mm -hmm. but those things you brought up, yeah, they, um, like let's take economic development for example. Yeah, we really divided it between entrepreneurship or business or commerce, however you want to put that, and then workforce. So right. so we have so that lends itself to two good headings, like one being a workforce heading, and then and then stating the aspiration under it. I'm I'm with you, Aiden, that we don't need to say aspiration. It can just be the way that you have it now where it's just stated there. Mm -hmm. And then the and then the goals associated with it under where under under that. And uh, it leads me to a question I've had for a while now. The final version, like how the goals are listed there and the and there's three, you know, goal topics under there. Um, will the final version have the strategy drop down right there, like with the goal, like to, or something that you can click on to access it from that location? Is that is that the vision? So I'm going to tag John in here, but if there is one or two strategies per goal, I think that we can add either bullet points here um, if it's a lot more than that and this is just becoming like a gigantic run-on list we might need to be more creative um john did you have a vision a creative vision for this kirby you repeat your question yeah so what, what we're looking at now is um the aspiration listed and then the and then three goals essentially listed under that so where the strategies would come in um i was wondering if like if a person hovered over one of the goals, would this would a drop down menu of strategies appear there, or just how how will people access the strategies from this part? And and part of my question is is that the vision, or do people access the strategies somewhere else on this page instead? 
Isn't that what the how do we get this done section is? No, yeah, so when we when we wrote that, these out originally, the how we get things done was really a summary of just some of the key strategies, but it doesn't outline. I mean, as all of you know who've gone through the, the strategies, we sometimes have about 17, 18 strategies that are that are there most of which we don't really need to talk about because they're just ongoing programs. You know, uh, we're gonna participate in designated downtown. We're gonna continue to, you know, uh, participate in the growth center program. And so you've got these different strategies, but really what the, the, the chapter and the page is really just supposed to tell us what's our goals and what are the key things we're doing that we're gonna help accomplish this. Um, and we don't have to go through all every single strategy. It's really just to highlight the key things. And then with something, it'll say if you're interested in, in you know, more in depth or if there's, a, you know, like you said, an inserted box or something, John, that people can can drill deeper into it, then they could go and see, well, you know, here's here are the various ways that you can kind of look at what are, what are the goals that are associated with this, this aspiration? What are the strategies that associate with this yeah i guess my question goal. is how how nested are your goals and strategies is like you have certain strategies under a particular goal or is it like a list of goals and a list of strategies to accomplish those goals kind of more collectively they're very connected um so what we end up with at the end is the strategies might go through this strategy supports goal one right. in goal five. Um, and in fact, that strategy may also support goal two and goal six from a different chapter because it's- So it's not just like a one ABC because your ABC could actually relate to other goals. Yeah. yeah, when we built this, we built it from the standpoint of, you know, uh, you know, we want safe and affordable housing. So how are we going to get safe housing? We're going to do this, 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 and this. And how are we going to get affordable housing? We're going to do this, right. this, this, and this. And there may be some that appear in both lists. And then as we, you know, once we built it out, you know, you then take all those goals and all those things, it ends up with a really long list. But then after mm -hmm. that, for presentation sake, we then started pushing things and compressing things together. But um, which kind of makes it impossible to put in in a descriptive format you know we don't really want to write right. out all of that um but from you know we, we kind of look at the staff is going to be kind of in the committees are going to be really looking at those implementation strategies and right. that nesting is important the information in there is important but from the public explaining to the public what we're doing and why we're doing it it's not as important we do want to have right that excel table and how they nest yeah. together um, or i think the excel important. yeah i think the excel table would go hand in hand with some kind of overall network diagram and i don't know if you've seen these where it will have like all of the strategies and it will show with lines like one strategy might have three connections another strategy might just have one connection and it kind of looks like a beautiful mess of wires <laughs> But if we could make a network diagram that's clickable in some way, I don't know. I'm sure there's programs out there. I'm just brainstorming. That could be a visual way of showing how the strategies link to the different goals in the different chapters. And then that table is kind of the back end. Yeah, and the more information you put really in the cool. table... Yeah, the more information we put in the table, the more information we can, more questions we can ask of it. So if we put in there, you know, who's responsible for this, whether it's a committee or a staff person, you could then also query by, you know, what are all the, right? what are all the projects that have been assigned to the planning director? What are all the yep. projects that have been assigned to public the, works housing, or what, yeah. the housing committee? Um, and, yep. and so people could sort by depending on who they are. But again, from the plan, the written storyboard that's not really what the public we don't yeah. want the public getting lost trying to wander yeah, through that i agree but the committees and the staff would you know love to understand how to do a quick query of these things here so they could go and isolate the things that are 
for them because we're looking at this as an eight year strategic plan and the committee is going to want to say, all right, this is an eight year plan. What's our work plan for this year? And what's our mm -hmm. work plan for next year? And what should we be going to the council for, for budget requests? And, um, you know, how does this relate yeah. to staff loads? Um, you know, we can't have all the projects that are assigned to the community development specialist being all the projects we work on and nothing from somebody else. So, right. Do you want it? Do you want to at least label your goals so you could have HR one, like historic resources one, historic resources two, historic resources three? I find like giving a little code like that is helpful in organization. Yeah, if that if that makes sense. I think at this point we had just made individual Excel tables, and and at a certain point I started scratching my head, thinking maybe maybe I should be building this out differently. But I think we can always go through and make those edits if it's like no, go you know don't just go goal one, goal two, goal three, goal four. You know that should be different for each one of the each one of the Excel tables, so that way you'd know. Right. Yeah, we had that was the the concept. It was just unnecessary or too complicated to try to explain, like to try to have everyone put in those. And we figured we would just index it once it was all done and, and give them identifiers. But that'll okay. allow that'll allow us to, you know, either create parameters or allow for more interactivity and not worry about like it'll it'll just simple it should simplify things. I guess I'm still trying to I'm trying to think of like how do you how do you integrate it? within this, you know, under each goal, it could get, it could get maybe a little messy if we're trying to have like, it'd be easy if you want to send something, like have something either pop up that has those strategies. I'm just um, struggling to think of like how to elegantly and like integrate all of those in, in some kind of interactive way. Mm -hmm. um, do we maybe try to make a separate page for implementation where we have just all that excel information and you know instead of trying to make it into a, into here and just go through and say for a more in-depth review of goals and strategies you know check the implementation page with this link or something like that and it, it could bring you to that and then have those filtered to whatever like that goal is yeah. you know that yeah, and there could be instructions like, of how to do a filter if you're interested in more of the filter this is how you would do it i i would like to see uh the public be able to access the strategies directly from the goals here though i mean i just just want to make that point that if they're reading about a goal here and it's, and it's something of interest that they should have immediate access, I think, to the strategies of how we're going to do this exactly. Um, and and there's, a lot, there's a lot of policy reasons for that. One big one for me is, uh, let's say we have a housing goal of, you know, to go, the, the gist of it is Montpelier cares a lot about housing. And a person, I think, would say, how much do you really care about housing? I wanna see what you're really doing. And they wanna click right then to see what the strategies actually are. Because a lot of these goals, are subjective. I mean, I think that people are going to want, they're going to read the subjective goal and they're going to want to know, like, what are you, what are you really doing? So I just want to make sure that, that people have easy access to that. Um, and I don't think, I'm not hearing anybody say anything differently. I just wanted to make that point. So I don't need to take up more time on that. Um, but I do think it's important for that, for that access to be there. Absolutely. Do you think that having it be a link? is is it just another step that you don't want people to have to take or do you or it would be like a link be okay a direct i think i think a link is fine okay. um like what what wouldn't be great at it, i think is if it if you have to go somewhere else on this on the site to access or find that if you have to go look for it that's yeah, that's all i right, think right. that's not helpful but but um a link a pop-up thing i mean i defer to all of you who have much better expertise about user interface stuff than me for that. Yeah. <laughs> I just, but as a person who's a user of these things, I want to be able to click the thing that I want to know about now, you know? So, um, so that's, that's all I have to say, but, but the act, the specifics of how that happens is, you know, I you just have to try it. Yeah. Just, yeah, no, I, I think this is, 
this is exactly what I want to explore with this group um, because there are certain limitations of the website platform and there are certain things that we need to fulfill. So knowing where those gaps are, like it's going to require some creative problem solving. When I look at this, I'm like, okay, there's like a slide function that we could have. Here's our, here's our um, aspiration. And then it has the goal and a strategy. And it's like, a, you know, I could make that into a photo, but then that's not accessible to other folks. So like I could, you know, have a little chart or we could have what Gabby was talking about, the, the diagram with the lines showing what serves what. Um, but for someone who's using a, a web reader or screen reader, that doesn't do anything for them. So yeah, trying to make sure that we're, we're putting the content in the right places <laughs> um, and that it's easy and accessible for, you know, the, for the public, not for the more like wonky folks who really want to get into the nitty gritty. So one one way that could work a little bit, just as another idea that you know, following up with Kirby's wanted to be able to have that direct. I know sometimes you can hover over things and it'll bring up a card, mm -hmm. or click on something and it brings up a card. And if if there was a description of the goal and then there's just three, you know, in in you know in the case of the historic, the mm -hmm. first historic goal. There are three things: There's historic surveys program, the key historic resources study, and the certified local government program. There could be three of these, and you, if you click on them, it put, brings up the box which describes what that strategy is. It doesn't go into maybe all the details of how much it costs and all those pieces, or maybe it does. I don't know, but it doesn't take you into the full um, Excel table depth, but if right. you know if there was just underneath assess there's you know those three three pieces and then under the other one you know there might be again some of them come back get repeated so under engage there's certified local government again the historic preservation outreach program and the designated downtown program so you'd have mm -hmm. three one of which is the same as the one above but it's just it's not describing it. It's just going to put a little tag there that goes and says, you know, th these these are the tools from the implementation plan that would be used. And if you hovered over it, it would describe it, you know. Yeah. Certified yeah. I mean, I'm, I can play around with it and, and, and bring it to the next plan commission meeting. I think it that's important to get right at this early stage. Um, so I'll try to look at the different functionalities and um, yeah, well, yes. see what ideas work and what ideas see what can happen. Just threw, threw an idea out there. Maybe it doesn't work. Maybe it does work. But, you know, ultimately, I think the more complicated Excel table, full detail piece, I think might be work best as its own implementation page where we've got right. all the data and all the information. And these other ones can just grab bytes of data that we want to have the public get more information on of what specifically we're going to be doing. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Um, so I feel like I have some pretty good action items um, from this. Do we feel like we have time to just maybe scroll through some other examples? Um, do we find that valuable? We can also start wrapping this part of the conversation up as well. I think, uh, you know, this, this is, we're available for this right now. So, so whatever will be helpful for you, I think we're on board for. Um, yeah, perfect. So there's these two examples, one out of Toronto, one out of Onondaga County uh, in New York um, that have done fairly similar, not completely the same processes, but this is something that as we have more of these houses, so economic development, housing, um, public safety, community resources, whatever you want to call it, um, these will be the little bookmarks that come up. So this could be like a homepage, 
so folks could see, okay, housing, historic resources, um, this is how they've chosen to organize it. Um, but I think this is helpful just to start to see with what the website can do and how some other folks have organized their information. Um, these don't look to be exactly like comprehensive plan titles, but maybe some uh, like strong themes in their community. Um, so here there you can choose to include these bookmarks or not. So everything that's this title heading um, style can come up in here. So if you want to give people the ability to, okay, I want to jump to national trends, um, they can just use this as another um, navigation. So this group has put links uh, within the text. That same sort of scroll and photos look. Let's see, do they have any, here, let's go to their map. So um, let's see, this map, yep, this is has the full sort of GIS data in the background. Um, so I think I can, should be able to click and see things. Maybe they have that turned off. So now you can choose like what gets displayed on certain maps with the little legends. I, let's see if this scrolls. They have others. Okay, so vibrancy was the only characteristic they chose there. And then they do have a public input form on the bottom here. All thing that we can create. They pulled in some census data into some of these maps. So here they have a photo of a graph. It's not interactive. And this is the sort of thing where um, with a screen reader, you would just have to try to describe this as best you, as you could. But I don't think officially it would count as an accessible form of media. Um, but I don't know that 100% sure. trends. So again, they've just used a static map here. And let's see what this map has. I think this will be a really good one to look at because I think we're going to push the mapping capabilities to their fullest extent in the land use section where we want to, you know, we might want to get a pretty granular. So I'd, this is yeah. where I'm most interested in the other examples of like, how did they tackle land mm -hmm. use zoning, housing? I believe this one had a really good, sorry, I'm kind of scrolling fast. I know it's, <laughs> it can be frustrating. Um, they had this really cool like map button tool where um, that's something that I see us being able to, okay, here's our neighborhoods. With the Canadian spelling, obviously. <laughs> um, so here's, oh, yeah. so we, you know, this could be, how many neighborhoods did you say there was, Mike? Uh, 50. We don't want to well, from a zone from a zoning standpoint, it's 50 neighborhoods, but there's wow. many, <laughs> many um other it's yeah. Not all every neighborhood is zoned differently, is it? No. Okay. <laughs> we just worked with a community that's like 1200 people they had 32 zone districts because they had everything as these like character areas and then sub zoning districts within those areas and we're like you're like two square miles you don't need 32 <laughs> no we've we've got a we've got a lot of zoning districts but not it's not it's not 50 it's just really in a number of cases it broke out you know you might have the rural district anywhere that it doesn't have 
sewer and water, but you right. might end up with nine distinct areas right. around the city. Each one is its own neighborhood. And Got so it. it's, and most of it is really within the zoning. There's a description of the character of the neighborhood um, that describes, mm -hmm. you know, Wrightsville up by the dam or, you know, another area. So that's where a lot of the neighborhoods, there may be three or four very similar neighborhoods, but they're not connected. So, right. Okay, well, we'll see how to tackle that. This is this is an example of what these map buttons can do. Um, so this is pulling in different census data in the background here. So I believe these are probably their version of census blocks, or I'm not actually sure what the differentiator here is. Um, but you can click on these. I don't know why it's not showing the actual number of population. Sometimes you can do that. It should give a little, oh, here we go. Legend, household income. So this is the sort of thing that we can do with um, whatever information's in, in the background of the land use. Um, you can organize it and these can jump to, they don't have this capability right now, but these buttons can jump to different um, extents of the map and zoom in and zoom out. Um, so people can can explore it on their own. Um, I won't really belabor these examples, but just to show how other people have used it, it they're people are using a lot of photos for, you know, official city and county purposes. So now I'm kind of questioning my my take on the accessibility. Like I know it's it's not interpreted the same way if you just have a what you would just do is add a little sentence caption to each of these like map showing population employment concentration but you know it's not as um you know it doesn't have the same visual it'll still be better than what we've got right now i mean whether you're looking at a pdf map or whether you're looking at a hard copy plan there's, there's, you know, we don't make, you know, we don't make our hard copy plans with, you know, Braille accessible. Right. right. So, I mean, whatever we're doing now on the digital is has got to be a, an improvement over what right. we currently are doing, and and obviously we'll strive to be as fully as close to fully accessible as we can get, but at the mm -hmm. same time. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see where where we end up from a legal and right reason, right yeah. reasonable standpoint. Okay. Yeah, because I really I think these like are are important map graphics, and you know it opens up um, some new possibilities. If you know as you can pull in these charts and tables that you you can't put in otherwise. Um, so. Anyway, so those are those two. I can, I'm happy to send along those links as well. Those are just um, publicly available um, if people want to explore those, these examples more. Or say like, I definitely want, like I really like that they did this. I really want that to be in our plan. That's really helpful as well. And I'll throw those in the chat and then email them to Mike as well. Governor Aaron, do you have any thoughts? Okay. John and Aaron have no thoughts. Uh, I don't know anything. I'm just learning. This is fascinating. <laughs> good to hear. I think simple is good. I think uh, you know static maps are also great with the descriptions i think we need to just tell people what we're trying to tell them and not like mm -hmm. expect people to try to figure it out and like this toronto one i think uh i think that that where people can explore like the different demographics while mm -hmm. like conceptually is cool i don't think the execution is great i i think it's hard to understand what's happening here and you click through and you just see these chloroplast maps that are just different shades of green and you're like 
I don't know what this is telling me, which is kind of neat yep. if you want to dive in and explore, but. Uh, yeah, but you're missing the so what, you have to do that yourself. And I think part of the purpose of a comp plan is to do some of the analysis and come up with the so what of like, yeah, whatever the so what is, like we have a lot of neighborhoods with large kid populations or large immigrant populations or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so do you have a strategy or a goal around any of these differences that you're noticing? Right. I think that's where I think the interactive part's cool, but like, I think doing enough of the analysis of like, these are the five ways we want to slice it and show and then have your so what around those slices. But I can tell you generally that uh, a major priority for this planning commission and for the city and just for Vermont as a state is uh, to allow and develop more housing development. Um, so if, I think if we are going to focus our dive into a particular issue with, with like map data to support it, like you're saying, that housing is an obvious one for us mm -hmm. to, to have that kind of support around. Yeah. Um, and we've, this, this plan's more ambitious than previous plans as far as housing goes. And a lot of our work recently has been to try to have the city be more ambitious about helping, um, being housing friendly. Um, so, and, and it's a, it's kind of the topic of the moment. It's one of the main topics in the state. Yeah, and I think following up on Gabby and John's comments, you know, one of the things we were trying to get away from, you know, we've got a four, you know, whatever, a 300 page comp plan that's just full of data mm -hmm. um, and charts and, and you know, but it, it's just data for the sake of data. It's like, well, we guess we should talk about what the population is. And, you know, it's, well, we're trying to really get away from that and really just try to get and focus on the issues and what's important. So yeah, that that so what piece is really what's important. We didn't intentionally want to fill the entire plan full of um, data and information. It really right. is. This is what's important. Here's some data that's important to that. Here's a map that shows that. Um, and and here's what we're going to do about it. That's what's most important is educating the public on what are the issues, uh, educating them on what we're going to be doing about it, and um, trying to leave a lot of the, you know, you know, John and I would spend all day drilling into those those data maps, but I don't <laughs> think that's useful for the public. Right. Like we're, t we're telling a story here and if it's not helping to tell the story then it's then it's hurting because it's it's just complicating it but yeah this this graphic here is a helpful one there you know helping people yeah i really like it it's cute it's like a little lego do you, do you have um granular enough land use data for every building so you know what it is like single family home, duplex, multifamily. I'd have to see what we can peel out of the probably, I'm, you know, I'm thinking of the assessor cards and whether it's in, as a separate block in, in the NIMRIC data or not. Uh, it is, it, it like residential is broken down by category, but it's up to the local assessor to, to fill that out. Sometimes it's in a descriptor in the end that'll say like two two DW plus um, something, yeah, and right. it makes it difficult to then yeah. grab that and and recode that. Now, if they were consistent throughout the entire thing, then we can, mm. you know, if they always this, said yeah. two DW and later on they say D, you know, DPX. Then you're like, well, now we've got duplex and two dwelling units. It's like, well, that's not going to work for us. We really need to have it. If it's always going to say two DU, it says two DU. Mm -hmm. uh, and if right. it's consistent, I mean, that might be a whole vote. other project. But if you had that data, you could build some really powerful maps to like show what you actually have versus what it's zoned for. Um, but we do have some course. We have some course data that we did that we might be able to use uh, as we developed the zoning. We went through and took each neighborhood 
Um, and that was how the neighborhoods came out was breaking them into the various pieces and then calculating what is the 90 percentile for density. Uh, um, so that way you'd know that's why this is zoned res 6,000 is because the 90 percentile dense density was 5,980. Um, and we just rounded that up. And so we have that for each of the neighborhoods. We wrote down what was the density of each unit and found it. Okay, so that might be a good starting point. So we might have some course data, but not right. specific down to what is this, what, how many units are in this building? No. How many dwelling units are in this neighborhood? Yes. Got it. Okie dokie. So, Mike, I will work with Zach to get RPC data. Is he the right person? Uh, I've got it on my list. I'm actually going to be trying to meet with the RPC tomorrow on something different. Um, okay. And I'm going to find out who the new GIS person is that's over there. Because as I said, they, they've... I knew the three previous ones and they're all now off to new jobs. So I've got to yeah, figure right out who's, the, who's their newest GIS person, unless John knows. It's uh, Brian Wright. It is Brian, okay. Perfect. I have not met him and I will try to introduce myself tomorrow. Awesome. Okay. And then I have some other notes too, just about, you know, integrating that data, trying to look at a couple ways to incorporate the goals, aspirations, and strategies. Um, we will at least do the data request and the outline, um, just again, a Word document of the other chapters, but I'll sort of hold tight to making any um, big website updates until some of this other information filters in. And that should give some other planning commission members time to look at the website, look at those examples, um, and give that overall sort of structural and content feedback. And John, if we can set up a time for you to kind of show us the back end of your spreadsheet so we can start thinking about how that might into the story map, that'd be good. So what's our next, um, Aiden, what's our next goal date for meeting with this group? Let's see, I think I had something in a, it's second and fourth Monday, correct? Yes. I think I had a, um, okay, I don't have anything at least on my project plan until December. Um, we could do the, probably the 25th seems a little soon, unless you would like us to come give a brief version of this presentation for the other planning commission members that could work. Um, but, or the 24th, 24th, I guess it would be. Um, that seems to, 24th of October? Yep. I think that seems too soon. So then we're into the 14th of November or the 28th of November. What would be, what would we be talking about at that meeting? We wouldn't be having, like what, like I think we, I think we need to do more behind the scenes if we're ready to come back to the group. Yeah, I mean, I think the 14th could be okay, could be doable. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's that seems fine right before the holidays. Yeah, that <laughs> seems fine by us. Yeah, well, after the 14th, you get Thanksgiving, and then, yeah, just, I feel like meetings get canceled all the time in that time frame. Mm hmm. And I had also highlighted the um, the twelfth, December twelfth, as a potential as well. So just if that, if there's any like agenda needs um, of potentially attending that one, but we can make that decision on the fourteenth. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll be available to help. Obviously, this is a huge priority for us. So uh, whatever you think you need, you can drop in and, and 
ask for feedback. Um, time may be tighter in future meetings, maybe only 30 or 45 minutes available. Yep. Uh, but I think we're flexible about that. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for your um, feedback and willingness to, to uh, explore those different options with us. Thanks so much for coming. Uh, we're excited. We're glad that SC Group's working on this for us. Um, I think we're going to like it. These are really fun projects for us, so we we like this kind of thing. <laughs> it seems like it seems like a fun, creative project. Um, I'd like to do that. Sounds fun. Sounds like good job. Good for you. <laughs> like hiring. <laughs> I feel like every planning agency in town in Vermont is hiring planners right now. It's so mm -hmm. funny. It's like people are just. <laughs> No. Yeah, we need it, really. Um, we need planning help. Um, okay, well, I don't think we have anything else. This isn't an official meeting, John and Aaron, okay. as we probably know. So um, I think we can just call it a night unless anyone has anything else. And if we get, if we leave now, then Mike will come back and everyone will be gone and he'll just <laughs> be really confused. Um, Anybody have anything else for Gabby or Aiden? And for, for John and Aaron, just to help you guys catch up, this is Jake. He's the intern helping work on the plan with Mike, by the way. Good to meet you, Jake. I was wondering who you were for the last hour and a half. Yeah, yeah uh, Mr. Here's off. And thanks, okay, Gabby well, and Aiden, for the presentation. It's really helpful. I, like I said, I this is not my area of expertise, so it was really interesting to see your ideas as we move forward. So looking forward to working with you guys. Thanks. Awesome. Well, your area of expertise is your home community, so where we can help you display the information and make it visually appealing and easy to understand, and you make sure that we're actually depicting the right information from, you know, think about your perspective or someone in your neighborhood that you want to, you'd want to show this to, or, you know, your resident perspective is, is incredibly valuable. Absolutely. Well, I will be in touch with some of those links to get over to Mike and hopefully we can get that GIS data um, all sorted, but thank you all so much for your time this evening. Great. And Mike, I'll see you next week at the Northern New England Planners Conference. Yeah.